Hey everybody, welcome back to Sovereign Money. Imagine combining the security of your hardware wallet with the power of running your own Bitcoin node. Today, I'm going to show you how to create nuclear level Bitcoin security by connecting your hardware wallet to Bitcoin Core and creating what's called a watch only wallet. For those of you who haven't seen my earlier videos, shame on you. Bitcoin Core is original software and handle transactions directly without relying on any third parties. This setup gives you bank-grade security with complete financial sovereignty. And if you're a good subscriber and you watch those previous videos and you've got your Bitcoin node up and running, you're halfway there. Today's video focuses specifically on creating a watch-only wallet. In our next video, we'll go over how to actually create and sign a Bitcoin transaction with this setup. Let's dive in and level up your Bitcoin security. Before we begin, I need to make a note that your Bitcoin node needs to be fully synced. This is absolutely essential. What does that mean? Well, running a Bitcoin node means downloading a copy of the entire Bitcoin blockchain, including every transaction that has ever happened on the blockchain. Think of it like a massive financial ledger that just keeps growing. The syncing process is your node downloading all of those transactions and verifying every page of that financial ledger. It takes a lot of time because you're literally downloading the entire history of Bitcoin. And if you try to do this exercise with a node that is not synced to the very latest block on the blockchain, it's not good. Imagine trying to check your bank balance without having access to the recent transactions. An unsynced node wouldn't know about any recent Bitcoin transactions, including payments or receipts. And this means you could accidentally miss incoming payments you've received. You could see an incorrect balance. You could create transactions that would be invalid on the network. And you could even be vulnerable to certain types of scams. The sync process takes a few days depending on your hardware, but it's essential for security. Enough of that syncing stuff. Let's get to the first step. The first step in connecting your hardware wallet to your Bitcoin node is setting up the right equipment. Here's a quick checklist of everything you're going to need for this setup. One, you're going to need a computer running Bitcoin Core. I'll be demonstrating this on Mac OS, but it works on Windows as well. You need your Bitcoin Core application fully synced with the Bitcoin blockchain. You need a hardware wallet, and in this case, I'll be using my Trezor Model T, but the process is similar for other devices. And you're going to need about 30 minutes of focused time. Tell your wife to go shopping, lock the kids in the basement, and let's get to it. While I'm going to be using the Trezor Model T for this demonstration, like I said, this setup works with several other hardware wallets. The official list is available at a link that I'm going to put in the description below. But some of the devices that work with this technique include the Trezor 1, the Trezor Model T, the Trezor Safe 3 and Safe 5, multiple different ledger devices, cold card Mark IV, Bitbox devices, and the Blockstream Jade. And I think there's a few others. Let's take a second to understand the setup of connecting your hardware wallet to your Bitcoin Core node. Let me explain using this simple analogy. Think of it like having a high security safety deposit box at a bank that you own. Bitcoin Core is your personal bank branch. The hardware wallet represents the physical key. And the watch only wallet that we're going to be creating is like your bank's record keeping system. It can track your balance, but it can't move your funds without the key. When we create this watch only wallet, think of it like installing a security camera to monitor your bank vault. It can see everything that happens to your funds, but can't open the vault or move anything inside. Only your hardware wallet, the physical key, can do that. This physical separation is what makes this setup so secure. Now, there's some software we need to set up before we get everything rolling. I'll explain each step as we go so you can follow along. In my case, I'll be working on the Mac terminal application throughout this tutorial, along with the Bitcoin Core software. So roll up your sleeves, launch the Mac terminal application, and let's get dirty. The first thing we need to do is install what's called Homebrew with the following terminal code. This Homebrew application is going to help us manage our other software installations. And again, this is not complicated. You just have to follow step by step. Okay, here we are in the Mac terminal, and I'm going to enter these commands one by one, but I can't really execute them because, of course, I had to do this before the video to make sure everything worked properly and suss out some details so I can't reinstall the software. So I'm just going to show you the commands, and you have to, you're have to you going to have to do it yourself. Okay, the first command is to install Homebrew. And that command is this. <laughs> it's a long command. I will put a list of these commands in the description below, and I might actually make a PDF that you can download 
uh, with the whole process step by step in a checklist format to make it easy for you. But this is the first command. I'm not going to read it, but you can zoom in and look at this command yourself, or you can copy and paste it from the PDF or the in the description. If I press enter, it's asked for the password. If I enter the password, it will tell me that it's already installed. So I'm not going to go through that. I'm just going to enter the wrong password a few times here and get out of that. Now, once that has downloaded and installed, the next step is to install three critical applications. And that's it for installation. It's not too bad. I'm going to clear this. There we go. The first application we need to install is Python 3. But we're going to use this homebrew application to install Python on our system. And that command is super short and simple. It's brew space install space Python 3. Again, this might take a few minutes. Once that finishes, then we can move on to the next command. And the next command is actually a Python command. And that command is PIP3, which is py short for Python 3, install HWI, which is short for hardware interface. That allows you to connect your Trezor to your Mac computer and interact with it through this application and the Bitcoin Core application. So this is a critical step. So go ahead and install the HWI application. Once the hardware interface is installed, the next step is to install what's called libusb. And that is a small application that allows the computer to recognize something via the USB port, which is USB-C in my case. And of course, I want to recognize this Trezor T. And that command is brew, using that homebrew application that we installed earlier, install libusb. That's it. And again, there's, it shows a couple responses, and then that should be installed. Oh yeah, real quick. Before we interact with the Trezor, I want to, you to install one more little Python module with the code, or with the command, excuse me, of pip3 install requests. That will help ease the communication with the hardware device, okay? Uh, I got some errors last time I did this, and so I installed this module, and they went away. Okay, so at this point, you should have Homebrew installed, Python 3 installed, HWI application installed, and LibUSB installed. So those are the four things that you need to have installed properly to get this all up and running. I know it sounds complicated, but... It worked for me straight out of the box, one step at a time. For those of you who want uh, help with this, I can't. I'm so sorry. I'm not able to help people on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, other than what I'm doing with these videos. And uh, I hope that you don't run into too many problems with your installation. Now, a security note before we go ahead and start working with our Trezor device. Only connect your hardware wallet to a trusted, secure computer with a secure operating environment. If you have any thoughts that you may be infected by some type of malware, please factory reset your device, install what applications you need, and start over. Now, I do that every six to nine months or so. I wipe my Mac and my phone, actually, and erase everything. I don't restore the applications that were on there. I simply download the ones that, that I need as I'm using them, and I think that's good security protocol. So if you're unsure, factory reset your application or your device and and then come back here, install those applications before you connect your Trezor to your computer. That being said, now it's time to connect the Trezor device. So I'm going to plug the Trezor into my Mac. Okay, it says tap to connect. So I tap and I'm going to enter my pin. Now, I'm not using a passphrase in this example with my uh, account or my wallet that's on this device. It's a demo wallet that I'm not going to be using otherwise, but you can use a passphrase. I don't have specific instructions on how to use a passphrase, but there are some areas where I will mention a passphrase that you could sneak in uh, and use that for your situation. Okay, now the first command we need to enter in order to interact with our Trezor device is HWI e number eight. This verifies the connection with our hardware device and it gives us what's called the 
device path. And that is this one right here, web USB 001 colon one. And we're also looking for the fingerprint. Super important. So take note of that and the fingerprint for later. I'm going to write them down. I'll be right back. All right. The next step is to get the master XPUB. That is the public key from our hardware wallet. And in order to do that, we need to enter another command. I have it in my clipboard. I'm going to paste it in here. This is the command, HWI command again. And then you specify the device, the device path, and get XPUB. And then this is the derivation path for native SegWit. Press enter. I have to confirm it on my device. And there we go. And it gives us our XPUB. Good. Keep that around. You're going to need that in a few minutes when we create the wallet over on the Bitcoin Core console. Speaking of which, let's head over to the console right now and we're going to create our watch-only wallet using this XPUB. Okay, here we are in the Bitcoin Core wallet. This is the main interaction screen or GUI, graphical user interface of the Bitcoin Core wallet. And you can see there's an overview tab, a send tab, a receive tab, and a transactions tab. I have this wallet selected here, but that's not what we're going to be using. We're going to be using the console, which you do you select by going down here in the corner and selecting this little squiggly icon, which is show peers tab. And you're going to get a selection of all the people connected to your node. I have a lot actually, and you can look at the network traffic, but what we're interested in is the console right here. This is the command line we're going to be using for our commands to create our fancy new watch-only wallet. And to do that, the first command we need to enter is create wallet. I've copied it and pasted it. We're going to call it Trezor Watch. You can call it whatever you want. True, true, and then some empty quotation marks where you could put a passphrase if you want. True, true, true. Basically, all of those specify certain settings that make this a watch only wallet press enter and empty string given as passphrase and this wallet will not be encrypted because it doesn't have the keys in the wallet the keys are actually in here exactly where we want them okay now the next step is to get what are called our wallet descriptors and we do that with a special command that we're going to enter into the command line i have it pasted or copied excuse me get descriptors info and then if you'll notice here, it says fingerprint and XPUB key, actual XPUB key. So we need to get those items from the terminal application that we've already worked with. So I'm going to go copy those and paste them in here in the appropriate spots. Okay, I have the fingerprint pasted right here and the XPUB pasted right here. And this should give us the descriptors for the wallet. And there we are. Please make sure after you create the wallet that you switch this selector to it before you enter any more commands. Sorry about that. And the important things on here are the XPUB and the checksum. Very important. Okay. So we've got fingerprint, XPUB, checksum. Three most important pieces of information so far. All right. The next step is to import those descriptors into the wallet that we're working with, which is Trezor Watch. So I'm going to paste a very big command. Again, I'm going to have these either listed down below or in a PDF that you can download. So right here, it says fingerprint. We're going to have to fill that in. And XPUB needs to be filled in and checksum needs to be filled in. And this has to be done twice. So I'm going to start in the beginning here. This is the first, this is the beginning of the, of the command right here. So fingerprint, let's get rid of that word and type the fingerprint in. There we go. And the checksum. From above, I'm going to copy this, paste it here, and then I'm going to go to the other instance. It, it's sort of repeated twice here. Check sum. There we go. The fingerprint needs to be repeated as well. I'm going to copy that by erasing or pasting it. And there. That looks good. Now the XPUB, I'm going to go over to the terminal, get that, and paste it in here and here. The XPUB is also listed up here, right in this area. So you can you can copy it from either place. And that looks good. I think that's it. Let's press enter and see what happens. Hopefully no errors. 
Oh, okay. I found my mistake. So if you look at this command right here, you'll notice that it says get descriptor info and it gives us our checksum. That checksum is assigned to this number, the zero number. Then there's another checksum that we need to assign to the one number. And that checksum is calculated using the following code or the command, excuse me. It's the same command as above, except you add a one instead of a zero. You see that? I know this is kind of silly, but you can copy this, paste it in here and change this digit to a one. And then you'll get the checksum for the second half of this command. Okay. So what I did was I repeated the first checksum and added it down here, but the checksum up here matches zero. This checksum does not match, and therefore I have to re-enter this command. Now I'm going to do that right now. There is the giant code, and if you'll notice, there is a different checksum with the number one right here. And if we go forward here, there is a different checksum with the number zero. Okay, hopefully this will work and I won't get any errors. Bang, we're in business. Okay, so far so good. Okay, our wallet has been created, our watch-only wallet called Trezor Watch. Now let's go back to the main screen and see if the amount of Bitcoin in there is registering. If not, there's something that we can do in the console. Let's go back there. Okay, here we are on the main screen and we're going to go into Trezor Watch and oh no, no Bitcoin. Don't panic. We can fix this. What we have to do is we have to ask the console to rescan the blockchain. But you don't want to rescan the whole blockchain. Pick the block prior to your transactions that you have in the wallet. So I found the block that represents the position in time right before I sent Bitcoin to this wallet. I'm going to back to the console and show you how to do that. Okay, here we are back at the console. The command is rescan blockchain, oddly enough. And I'm going to start at this block number and see what happens. Do, 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 bang. Done. Quick. It's actually quite fast. Let's go back to the main screen and see what happened. And there we are. The Bitcoin is in the wallet. Perfect. And there you have it. You've successfully created a watch-only wallet that combines hardware security with the power of running your own node. In our next video, I'm going to show you exactly how to create sign and broadcast a Bitcoin transaction with this setup. While it takes some amount of focus to master, I'll try to break down every step to make it manageable. Remember, while this setup takes more time than just using your wallet's default software, it gives you true financial sovereignty. You're not just securing your own Bitcoin, you're running your own bank. If you found this helpful, make sure to subscribe and smash the like button. And oh, don't forget to press that notification bell. So you won't miss the second part of this series where we're going to put this setup into action. Leave any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.